Recently, the large Japanese company Daido Electric, located in Suzhou's industrial park, announced its withdrawal from Suzhou. Daido Electric primarily manufactures electrical machinery and assistive magnets. As revealed by a female informant, the company offers competitive salaries to its employees, with average workers earning between 7,000 to 8,000 yuan, equivalent to 973 to 1,112 dollars. Employees are also given shopping vouchers worth several hundred during festivals and holidays. The company's management is known to be more compassionate compared to many domestic companies. Despite its decision to leave China, all the due compensations for its employees have been fulfilled. The woman concludes by expressing her concern that over recent years, a growing number of foreign companies in Suzhou have either relocated or shut down, leading to a decrease in high-quality employers in the region. It is noted that Daido Electric Suzhou Limited was established in October 2003 with a registered capital of $21 million. An internal notification from the company circulating online indicates that due to group strategy adjustments and changes in the company's operational status, among other objective factors, they have decided to dissolve the company ahead of time. Suzhou in Jiangsu Province is just 110 kilometers from Shanghai, roughly an hour's drive away. Over the past few years, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Suzhou have consistently ranked among the top three industrial cities in China. In 2021, Suzhou's total industrial output value exceeded 4 trillion yuan, $628 billion, surpassing that of Shanghai. Not only is Suzhou one of China's largest industrial hubs, but it is also a hotspot for foreign investment. The city boasts more than 18,000 foreign enterprises with a cumulative actual usage of foreign capital surpassing $105 billion. According to official data, as of 2021, Japan stands as the third largest source of foreign investment for Suzhou. 2,973 Japanese companies have set up shop in the city with a cumulative actual use of Japanese funds reaching $13.6 billion, accounting for 53.9% of the entire province. Suzhou's economy is heavily reliant on foreign investment. In 2012, during the peak of foreign investments, the total industrial output value of Suzhou's large-scale foreign and Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan-funded enterprises reached nearly 1.9 trillion yuan, $262.2 billion, making up 66% of the city's total large-scale industrial output. The total profit was 93.7 billion yuan, $13 billion, accounting for a staggering 72% of the city's total profit from all large-scale industrial enterprises. This clearly indicates that foreign-funded manufacturing firms underpin half of Suzhou's economy. However, due to the uncertain outlook of China's economy, stricter regulations by the Chinese authorities, coupled with unpredictable political factors, many foreign companies are leaving Suzhou and turning their attention to Southeast Asia. Apart from Daido Electric mentioned at the beginning, other foreign companies that have left Suzhou include Nito Denko, Fujitsu, Canon Precision, Sanyo Appliances, Omron Precision Electrics, and Sumitomo Electric Industries, to name a few. Among them are several Fortune 500 companies, with some even employing tens of thousands of people. In a recent development, Shimamura, the parent company of Japan's second largest fashion brand, Shimala, has shuttered its remaining six stores in China, two of which were located in Suzhou. With the exodus of foreign firms, Suzhou's GDP growth in the first quarter of 2023 was a mere 1.9 percent, ranking it second to last among China's top 10 cities and dead last among the 13 cities in Jiangsu. All four of Suzhou's pillar industries saw significant declines. The electronic information industry, the largest, saw a 6.2 percent GDP drop. Equipment manufacturing, the second pillar, declined by 16.6 percent. The high-end materials industry, the third pillar, fell by 17.4%, and the biopharmaceutical sector, the fourth pillar, dropped by 10%. In addition to the industrial sector, Suzhou's foreign trade is also in decline. In this year's first quarter, Suzhou's import and export values decreased by 15.4%, exports fell by 10.7%, and imports by 22.1%. For Suzhou, industry and foreign trade are complementary and represent the two most critical pillars for the city's economy, both of which have witnessed substantial declines. In the first half of 2023, even though Suzhou's nominal GDP growth rate was 4.52%, it was the slowest growing among all cities in the province. The economy in Suzhou seems to have peaked. Post-pandemic, not only did foreign trade orders not increase, they actually decreased. This year feels like the toughest yet. 
and many factories aren't even hiring. The lady disclosed that the external environment has drastically changed, with many supply chains shifting to India and Vietnam. Without the advantage of foreign trade, China's manufacturing isn't as strong as we imagined. The decline or withdrawal of foreign capital affects the entire industrial chain. Particularly, the low to mid-end electronics manufacturing has hit rock bottom and has entered a phase of decline. Manufacturing, in order to survive, is now resorting to a bidding model to reduce profits. As for high-end products, we've only scratched the surface and breakthroughs are difficult. Companies closing down have been numerous in recent years, with few new entries. Naturally, employment prospects have worsened. It's hard to find a job in Suzhou this year, she said. Many are still unemployed, staying in motels or with friends from their hometown. She advised those considering jobs in Suzhou's factories to remain and work in their hometowns if they find employment there. Suzhou has high living costs, and with 12-hour rotating shifts, workers only earn about 5,000 yuan, $693 a month. Traveling all the way to Suzhou offers little monetary benefit and means leaving one's home behind. Beyond Suzhou, Japanese firms in other regions of China are also withdrawing one after another. Following the exits of Japanese air conditioning giant Daikin and tech behemoth Sony, reports from Japanese media suggest that Mitsubishi Motors might halt car production in China and is discussing exit strategies with its local joint venture partner, GAC, Guangzhou Automobile Group. Mitsubishi Motors stated that they are in discussions about future plans with the shareholders of the joint venture, but no decision has been made yet. Earlier in April this year, Mitsubishi Motors reported a $78 million loss due to sluggish sales. In 2022, sales for GAC Mitsubishi were just under 32,000 units, about half the volume from 2021. In July of this year, GAC Mitsubishi cut labor costs to boost business, and production of its Outlander SUV was halted due to poor sales. In a recent development, GAC's new car manufacturing plant in Changsha, Hunan, ceased production in March due to declining demand. Previously, Honda had also announced its considerations to establish supply chains outside of China and to reduce its dependency on the CCP. Similarly, Mazda expressed its intention to consider moving its production capacity outside of China. Data released by the Japanese research firm Teikoku Data Bank reveals that from 2020 to 2022, the number of Japanese enterprises operating in China dropped from 13,600 to 12,700, marking a 10-year low and approximately a 7% decline compared to pre-pandemic numbers. Compared to a study conducted in February 2020, 2,176 companies have either left China or their whereabouts are unknown, with 116 firms declaring bankruptcy or closing down. Discussing the reasons for the Japanese company's departure, Professor Li Shuhui, chairman of the Japan Study Center in Taipei and a faculty member at the College of International Affairs, National Chengchi University, believes that business difficulties stem from China's labor regulations and the opacity of domestic policies. These create an environment where Japanese businesses are easily influenced by political forces. Wang Xiuwen, an expert at Taiwan's Institute for National Defense and Security Research, stated, quote, Japanese enterprises are, in fact, more affected by the uncertainties of the CCP's policies compared to other foreign companies. Wang highlighted an important historical pattern. Quote, Whenever the Japanese government's policies offend the CCP's political interests, the CCP tends to evoke anti-Japanese nationalism, targeting Japanese enterprises or civilians in China. This tactic has been employed multiple times since World War II. The CCP had previously instigated large-scale anti-Japanese movements in 2005 over the Yasukini Shrine issue and in 2012 concerning the Senkaku Islands. In 2022, a young woman in Suzhou, Jiangsu, was detained by the police for provoking trouble after being photographed wearing a kimono on Huai High Street, dubbed the Little Tokyo of Suzhou. During her five-hour detention, she was made to undergo re-education, delete the photos, write a self-criticism, and had her kimono confiscated. Huai High Street in Suzhou, built in 1994, is a renowned location originally constructed for Japanese enterprises in the Suzhou high-tech zone and also serves as a tourist landmark. Recently, China's legislative body introduced a draft of the Public Security Administration Punishments Law. One provision proposes a 15-day detention and a fine up to 5,000 yuan, approximately $685, for anyone wearing or forcing others to wear attire or symbols in public places that harm the spirit or feelings of the Chinese nation. 
Similarly, the production, dissemination, promotion, or distribution of items or statements that damage the spirits or feelings of the Chinese nation may also result in detention or fines. Zhao Hong, a professor at China University of Political Science and Law in Beijing, posted an online article expressing his concerns. Quote, if wearing a kimono for a photo shoot can be interpreted as harming the national spirit and merits punishment, then activities like dining at Japanese restaurants, watching anime, or even learning the Japanese language might soon be seen as offenses to national sentiment. If public servants can interpret and apply the law based on personal biases and beliefs, then we're not far from an era where any excuse can be found to lay blame. In August this year, Chinese authorities imposed a comprehensive ban on the import of Japanese aquatic products, due to issues related to nuclear wastewater treatment. This move has further strained China-Japan relations and hastened the exit of Japanese enterprises from China. In addition to Japanese companies, the confidence of European and American businesses in China has plummeted to its lowest level in years. A report released on September 19th by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai revealed that after several years of disruptions and restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, 2023 should have seen a resurgence of investor confidence and optimism. However, the survey found that American businesses' confidence in China continues to deteriorate, 40% of American companies are planning to or have already begun shifting their investments from China to other countries, a 6% increase from last year, with Southeast Asia being the preferred alternative destination. On the same day, the European Chamber of Commerce in China, representing around 1,700 European enterprises operating in China, released a report. The findings revealed that 50% of European companies perceive obstacles to doing business in China, 62% report missed opportunities, and 11% of European enterprises are relocating their current investments in China to other countries. The Chamber attributes the waning confidence of European businesses, in part, to China's counter-espionage law implemented in July this year. Over the past few months, after several raids and interrogations of American consultancy firms by Chinese authorities, concerns within the European and American business communities have heightened. They question the increasingly blurred red lines in China. What exactly constitutes a state secret, given that the scope of what's deemed sensitive continually expands? There are calls for depoliticized business environments in China. In an attempt to rejuvenate its economy, the Chinese Communist Party has made numerous public reassurances this year, promising a favorable business environment. However, these assurances have been juxtaposed with increased regulations on foreign enterprises and the arrest of foreign personnel. In March of this year, China announced the detention of an employee from the Japanese pharmaceutical company Astellas Pharma Incorporated, accusing them of engaging in espionage activities. Since 2015, 17 Japanese nationals have been detained by Chinese authorities on similar charges. Furthermore, according to British media, Charles Wang Zhonghe, A senior banker from Japan's largest investment bank, Nomura Securities, has been prohibited from leaving China. Wang Xiuwen commented, quote, Using violations of national security as a reason, or under the counter-espionage law, the Chinese Communist Party's arbitrary arrest of foreigners, especially Japanese, gives the majority of Japanese trading companies and manufacturers the impression that there's no guarantee for personal safety. It becomes imperative to evacuate Japanese employees from China as soon as possible. According to a report from Radio Free Asia, political commentator Li Yong stated that given China's political climate, the exit of foreign capital from China is inevitable. Quote, an economic collapse in China is unavoidable. All foreign investments will eventually leave. It's just a matter of time. Mainland China will revert to its isolationist policies and return to its planned economy. The current trend highlighting this ideological conflict and confrontation between China and the West is becoming increasingly evident. The report cited veteran financial commentator Tsai Shen Kun, who pointed out that as international supply chains rapidly move out of China, the operating environment for foreign and private Chinese enterprises is deteriorating. Many businesses face bankruptcy or closure. Don't even talk about finding jobs now. Look at these shops. Do you see? They're all closed. The man recording the video revealed that the current environment in China is harsh, Not only is business challenging, but property owners who bought commercial spaces are also suffering huge losses. The overall debt ratio is high, and life has become increasingly challenging. The footage captures a street in Humen, Dongguan. The man shared that he arrived in Humen in 2012. At that time, the streets were bustling, especially the shopping street that used to be overcrowded at night. 
Vendors would fiercely compete for spots, even if it meant paying a premium. Now there are more merchants than customers, and due to slow business, fewer vendors are setting up their stalls. Regarding the decrease in foot traffic, he stated that Dongguan, once known as the world's factory, was filled with workers from all over China. A common saying went, when Dongguan has traffic jams, the world faces product shortages. However, the once thriving Dongguan no longer buzzes with life. The city heavily depended on foreign trade exports, and with a decline in foreign orders and foreign businesses exiting, many export-dependent Chinese cities have been adversely affected. Chinese economist Chai Shen Kun emphasized that many believe that with the formation of China's new state council leadership, the economic situation would gradually improve. However, recent official statements have consistently highlighted struggle and security. Coupled with a decline in exports and domestic consumption, this has accelerated the exit of foreign capital from China. Tsai noted that the issues currently facing the Chinese economy certainly demand a comprehensive review from politics to economics.